Hey, this is Matthew Butler, and welcome to the Cut and Fill tutorial here. So, once you open the project up, you'll have a 720p or a 1080p option you can choose from. I'll just go for 1080p right away. And then you have, obviously, the audio um, pre-comps, which just has, uh, like, the metal texture that I'm using and some of the background layers and solid. So, that's all basic self-explanatory. Once you open it up, you have these two green layers you're going to want to paste your logo into. Um, this little yellow box here is just a placeholder to let you know to paste your mask here. So if I push M, you'll see this yellow layer, you can just delete that. And also on the second layer, click on that and delete it. Now I'm going to hop over to Illustrator and I have the Video Hive logo, and there's something you want to make sure you do. If you have a logo like this that has uh, complicated different colors on top of each other, it is not going to work out for this um, at all. So it'll basically show up like this, which is obviously not what you want. So you're going to want to either edit your logo or change it or alter it or bring out uh, specific parts of it or something because it will not look well at all. So I'm just going to focus on this video hive part. Go to object and expand. Click enter and now my type is all expanded out and I can bring it into After Effects. So copy that, go to After Effects, select this first layer, paste it in. You'll see all the masks pasted in and you'll see this blue box and the yellow mask. What you want to do is make sure your mask is inside the blue box. And I, I think this is a little bit small for me. So if you hold down Shift and Command, well, first double click it, and then hold down Shift and Command and expand it, um, you'll see that that's, you know, that's pretty big. So that'll work very well in the actual composition. This is not too close, it's not too small, and it's not breaking this blue plane here. So what you can do is go back to your masks here and make sure they're all set to difference. Select them all, copy them, and then go to your second layer here and paste those in. And they should be in the exact same spot as the first one, which they are. Now we can go into the element layer, which in the effects tablet, in effects control panel, you have the element. Click on Scene Setup, and there's our Video Hive text right there. If you're looking to change the front color from black to something else, you can just go down, click on Front Color, then go to Diffuse Color, click on that, and change to whatever you want. So I'm just going to go with like a blue. And if you wanted to go change the black back part here, you go to Bevel 2, same thing, go to Diffuse Color, change that. But I really like the black for this outside, so I'm going to keep that the way it is. You can click on OK, and something you can do is just scrub through and see if your text shows up, and it is not showing up. So that could be a problem. If you click on your element layer again, and the effects go down to right here where it says custom layers, and click on that and then you'll have the choice between textures and text. You want to click on the custom text layers. You can go to none for both of these and then go to one for the first one and then two for the second one. And it should be corrected. And if it's not corrected, just go a frame forward or back and it should correct. Now that that's updated, you can go to this first part and this 12, or I guess this would be the first one. You can go to the second one marker here, which is at 12 seconds in. I'm going to increase the quality a little bit so I can see better. And you'll see that it is looking pretty good. Um, let's go back to this little first marker here. It's at 6 seconds and 3 frames in. You'll see the uh, text falling down into position and um, and here's the holes 
Now, the, if you go back to the marker, falling into position, if your logo is a little um, different and don't and doesn't have the type um, spread out very evenly, you might have a problem with the text positioning. So what you can do is go into the effects element and then in the group. Actually, if you just click on element layer and push U, it'll come up with all the keyframes. And this Z position here, right here, the first one, um, you can go make sure you're on that keyframe, the first one, which matches up right here. And you can position that into a different spot, and forward or backward. And once you make that adjustment, it should change. It should fix the problem that you're having with your logo. Um, that's basically it for that part. So we can zoom back out and go to 12 seconds in, um, or a little bit closer. I'll go a little bit closer. Um, you'll see here the text does not exactly line up with the hole that it's filling in. So what you're going to want to do, you can select this first layer here. You're going to want to select all of the masks that you pasted in there. You can push on M, select this first mask, and then down to whatever mask you have. I have 15 here. And then you can, it looks like it needs to be moved over to the right and up a little. So you can go over a few. I mean, this is going to be completely different for you. So it looks like I'm over a little bit and then up a little bit. And then if you move the timeline a little bit, it'll update. So that sh fix the problem actually completely, um, which is great. So everything should be worked out with the file now. Um, the last thing you want to do is go to your element here. Or go to your um, brown layer here. The last thing you want to do is go to your brown layer here. And it's this brown little shadow area that's beneath your logo. Now depending on where your logo was positioned inside this blue box is going to matter where this brown layer is. So you can just, it looks like my brown layer is too high. So I can just hold down shift and push the down arrow a little bit and it'll move it down and it looks a lot better. Move down. Um, that should basically be it. Um, another thing, if you don't have Illustrator, you can, or if you have like a JPEG of your logo, you can bring in your logo to the composition. Let's go to layer and then pre-compose. I'm sorry. Go to layer and auto trace and it'll trace out your logo. And you can see the, the max is going to be traced. Now, the settings here are going to vary depending on your logo and the quality of it. But you want to make sure you don't have a ton of points or else Element's going to be really, really slow for you. So you're going to want to mess around with these if you don't have Illustrator and can't get those vector outlines. Um, let's just say that's OK. Once you have that masked out, you can delete that original layer. Then you can click on the new layer that was made in layer one and copy all your masks and then paste them into layer your um, green layers here and then make the modification to make sure the size is correct and then copy those and paste them into here. Um, any other questions that you might arise on, you can click this shy guy and it'll reveal all the other elements in this project. Um, the first one is the adjustment layer, which is the bright flash that comes up. As you see, it, it goes quite a bit with the music, so there's a bright flash here, and then there's not a bright flash. I'll drop this down slower so you can tell. See a bright flash, not a bright flash. Next up is the dark vignette. There's like a little dark grayish blue vignette around the whole scene. That's there. If you want to make modifications to where the camera is, there's uh, four, five different cameras right here. You can change those. 
um, element you already know gray layer I already overview and then we have the white background which is just the white area in the background um, in case the camera is at a severe tilt it shows the white layer instead um, we have a uh, background element reflection and this is just the cross section that's getting reflected onto the logo here I'm just picking up the reflections this bottom layer is the music layer and this final layer is just the metal that's on top of uh, the video hive and on the side of the video hive so that should basically break down the entire project if you have any questions at all just let me know and I'll uh, be sure to get back to you I hope this was a very informative tutorial and you're able to make some really awesome stuff with it thanks